get together in Alamo to fight. Oh, my blood will run over all my young man's blood. The blue sky will grow cloudy. The ravens will fly low. The women will cry, Awadi, Fit Awadi. Only God can see. Only God can live. Only God can understand. Only Blood will run over all my young man's blood. Oh, my young man's blood. Oh, my young man's Stranger, it's six in the morning. What do you expect? If the sheriff was in his office at this hour, I'd be president of the USA. Where can I find the sheriff? It's very important. What's all the hurry? I can't explain that now. I tell you, it's something urgent. I gotta find him. It might be urgent, but I wouldn't wake him. Go wait for him down there in the saloon. He's 
bound to go in there sometime during the day. Ten dollars. Not me. Here's your ten plus twenty. I call. You always manage to call my bluff, don't you? Bluffing is an art, youngster. And it takes years before you can learn it to perfection. Hey, he's an early riser. Well, what do we do now? Keep playing, but let me take a breather. I've lost a fortune tonight. Hey, whiskey. What's there to eat? Eggs. All right, I'll have some. How many? Hmm. Six eggs with some bread and bacon. Hmm. Lana, did you hear? Yeah, I'll fix them. Well, boys, this is the last time. Sat here all night gambling. Wait a minute. Maybe a beer will change my luck. A beer. Clumsy cowpoke, can't you catch it like the other men do? Calm down, friend, and bring me another one. That makes four beer glasses you've busted in three days. Yeah, and it's three days I've said, bring me a beer. Where I come from, they serve the beer. They don't throw it. And besides, beer is precious stuff and should be handled with care. <laughs> After losing half his money, he's still in a mood to joke. Here you are, sir. Thanks. After that, fellas, I'm feeling luckier. Why don't we up the stakes to 50? No, for me, it's more than I can go. I'll stay out. Count me out. Hmm. That leaves the two of us. High card, pick one. Huh. A jack. An ace. Your deal.
What have you got that handkerchief out for, mister? What do you think it's for? An ace, maybe. Listen to this, you saddle trap. No one's ever accused Mr. Silver of cheating, and if someone had, he wouldn't be alive to talk about it. I'll give you one minute to get out of here, to mount up and ride out of town. I suggest you not show your face in these parts again. You might end up worse off. Luckily for you, my doctor forbid me to do any killing today. Go on, get out. Hands up, all of you. And get away from that table. You can pick up your money. Thanks. Put your hands up. Been looking for me, stranger? Well, here I am. Let's hear what you got to say. Mr. Silver here's been cheating. You're mistaken. Mr. Silver's an honest man. The most upstanding and respected citizen in Wagon City. Was that why you came looking for me? No, I just wanted to warn you about the Ozark Indians. <laughs> we got nothing to fear from them. The Ozarks are only after the cavalry. They don't come into town. We don't give them any trouble, so they leave us in peace. Uh, that's about enough. Give me your pistol. something for that cut. I know some special herbs. Well, as I was telling you, the Civil War was a complete disaster for me. My only brother lost his life fighting, and so now I have no family left. Here you are, my granddad's secret. Rub it over your cut. If it worked for your granddad, it'll work for me too. Damned war. I lived quietly with my sister, had our own ranch. I tried not to take sides either with the Confederates or the Yankees. But I had to go away for a while, and when I came back, I found the ranch burned down, completely destroyed, and my sister was dead. As compensation, they gave me this. I keep it in my strong box. The treasurer of the United States of America promises to pay to Mr. Bud. <laughs> they took the trouble to call me Mr. Bud Massavy, the value of his ranch, plus 50 head of cattle, the amount to be set by the Board of Requisition, etc., etc., etc. A worthless piece of paper. Well, what do you intend doing now? I've got to get money. I want it fast. I want to rebuild my ranch. Well, I think I can help you do it. I'll take you to some friends of mine who have a lot of ideas and very few scruples. Stop where you are. Relax. Work it with me, Slim. And who's the other one? My aunt. Don't you recognize her? <laughs> Howdy, fellas. Howdy, Slim. How you been, old man? Howdy. Howdy. Who's he? He's someone I want you to know. He's all right, my buddy. Have you a name, mister? <sighs> I'd like to introduce the best and fastest gun in the West.
Where are you from? He used to have a ranch in the Midwest. The army burned it down. Did you hear that, boys? We got a big landowner in our midst. <laughs> I haven't had any sleep for a couple of days. That straw over there looks good. Sure, go ahead. A bed won't cost you nothing. There are lots of cattle around here, and we aim to rustle them. Are you interested? I'd have to steal a thousand head to get my ranch back. Cattle thieves are hung before they ever become rich. Yeah, and honest types like you croak in their beds, crying over the gold they left in the bank. Hmm. Not a bad idea. Maybe we all can be rich. If it works, there'll be money enough to burn. You'll see. We won't have to take the money. They'll give it to us. No! No! Stop it, you scumbag! Let go of me! Oh, Let me go! Hey, you are, Jack. That's about enough, I think. That's a mighty pretty mustache. After all this time, my work is still good. Yeah. I used to have a big barber shop of my own in New Mexico. How'd you ever end up here? Well, I was arguing with a customer. And instead of cutting his hair, I cut his throat. Hey, what in the heck is your this? mustache, senor? It'll make you better looking. Here. Admire yourself. <laughs> hey, I'll bet nobody will recognize us in this getup. But what are you going to do for uniforms? Don't worry, we'll fix that. Good day. What may we do for our valorous soldiers? We have a requisition order from Fort Lawrence. $150,000. Strange we haven't received the usual telegram to confirm it. Um, the Indians cut the telegraph wire. Oh. Stop wasting time and get moving. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. The requisition is in order, but without the confirming telegram, I can't make payment. Those are your orders, so give us the money. Well, we'll take it by force. All right.
Count it out. That's right. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Oh, stop it. We'll never thousand. finish this way. We've got to be at the fort before night. Come on. Hurry it up. One moment. Lieutenant, would you please sign the receipt? But I'm the sheriff. You can't go in. I told you, Lieutenant's orders. Out of my way. I want in. I said you can't go in. you do that for? You've killed her. What difference does that make? Let's get out of here. That's an Ozark girl. They've gone and run off with all our clothes. What are we waiting for? Relax. There were only a few Indians looking for whiskey. Maybe they only wanted whiskey, but Pete was murdered. All right, let's divide the money, then everyone can go his own way. That lieutenant's uniform's gone to your head. We'll divide it when and how I decide. Listen to this, you murderer. I would prefer you cut off my right arm up to here rather than split the money when you decide. <laughs> Leaves all the more for us. Come on, boys. Let's go. I set them free. Look what they've done to them. They're dying of thirst. Giant redskins. Give me a hand with them. Here we go. Feel any better? You're safe now.
send for Sergeant Warwick. Tell him that the two men are awake. Come over here. Here I am. I was just passing by. You're never just passing by, Sergeant. How do you feel, Lieutenant? You've slept for more than 12 hours. Twelve hours, huh? Captain Howell wants to see you. <coughs> what kind of manners are these, Lieutenant? Did you hear what I said? Stand at attention, Lieutenant. I want to know your name, serial number, regiment, and outfit. Where in the devil are you from? And just what kind of discipline do they teach you? Uh, excuse my bad manners, sir. But I thought, because of what happened back there, I... Lieutenant, a military officer conducts himself like a gentleman all the time. Well, now, are you ready to present yourself according to military regulations? Uh, <clears throat> Lieutenant John Smith, Fort Alamo, sir. Uh, who's he? Uh, that, that's Private Jim Kincaid from my platoon. We've gone to repair the telegraph line for Fort um, Alamo. The Ozarks attacked us. And the others? It was awful. We were given special treatment, I guess, as a warning for you. In Wichita, everyone told us that. What? That the Indians are in revolt and that the road isn't safe. If we took some other road, it might be better. Sergeant, if you want to make things better, stop criticizing the decisions of your superiors. Yes, sir. And you, Lieutenant, the minute you're presentable, you'll report to me, according to the military manual. Until then, I'll forget that I've ever laid eyes on either of you. Sergeant, find these two something to wear. Remember that we have several ladies with us. Yes, sir. Come on, Andrew. I've never traveled in such an uncomfortable stagecoach. It felt as if you were hitting all the bumps in the road on purpose. Hitting all the bumps in the road on purpose? The stagecoach's mine, ma'am. I wouldn't get no pleasure out of wrecking it. That's quite enough. I'll tell my husband, Colonel Collins, and we'll see what I'll he does tell you. whoever you please. I might have known nothing good had come of me once I was a bunch of old hands. Mrs. Collins, good evening. I hope you're well satisfied with the journey so far. Satisfied? Our coach driver has manners that are rude, disrespectful, and vulgar. Can you imagine he had the nerve to call me an old hen? The moment we reach our destination, I promise to take measures against him, Mrs. Collins. Even if he is a civilian. I'll inform my husband about this. I've never made such a horrible journey. Good night, Captain. How come you're not with the other women? Those comfortable tents are for officers' wives, not for prisoners like me. You mean you're a prisoner? Yes, I'm a prisoner. Now that you know, keep away from me. The captain's forbidden everyone to speak to the prisoner. But what is it you've done? You're from Fort Alamo. You ought to have heard. Yes, of course, but I've only been there a short time. You'd better not be seen talking to that woman, Lieutenant. It'll ruin your reputation. We're taking her back to Fort Alamo for trial. She tried to kill a soldier, so they say. You can believe it, I wanted to kill him, but that pig deserved to be murdered. If you have a young daughter, Sergeant, I hope for her sake only, that she'll never be in my situation. You'd probably condemn her too. Private Kincaid. Private Kincaid! Who, me? Are you or are you not Private Kincaid? Who? Uh, oh, yeah. Answer yes, sir, when you're addressed by a superior officer. All right, I will. Answer yes, sir, I said. Yes, yes, sir. The military bearing is deplorable. I'm well aware that the uniform isn't yours, but a cavalry soldier must never appear disorderly. And what about the hat? It's too big. But Captain, it was the only one I could find. Oh, a butterfly! Private yeah. Kincaid, are you out of your mind? Stand at attention! Y y yes, Your sir. conduct is incorrigible. But I'll personally do my best to change that. And so to begin with, from the day on, I'm finding you a month's pay. A month's pay? Answer yes, sir, when I'm speaking. You're dismissed. All right.
Sit down, Sergeant. What kind of convoy is this? Women, children, prisoners? It's an escort duty. The women are mostly officers' wives. Why, we even brought along the wife of the girl. <laughs> it's a bad time for crossing Ozark territory. You're telling me? Well, I know them redskins. If they stage a mass attack, we've had it. Do you figure that Captain Hull would be scared of a few ragged Indians? One time he sent to the grave a whole regiment with his strategy. Our own regiment. The 4th Pennsylvania Cavalry. Completely destroyed in less than half an hour by a southern artillery unit. All because he wanted to apply I don't know what regulation from the manual. And the colonel let him do it? <laughs> he was the colonel. <laughs> he was busted to captain and transferred here. They were hoping that he'd cause them fewer problems. I have trouble getting to sleep nights. I won't rest until he's a simple soldier like myself. It's bad to have him between your feet in this situation. Excuse me, Lieutenant, but uh, I confess I'm a bit surprised. Uh, this is the first time that any officer has let me speak poorly of a superior in his presence. If you'd been anyone else, I'd be assigned latrine duty for a month. <laughs> well, I was brought up to believe that every man has a right to say what he thinks. Where'd you graduate, Lieutenant? Huh? Ah. Uh, Annapolis? Yes, of course. Good old Annapolis. <laughs> Annapolis. <laughs> Why did you choose the cavalry? Oh, it was traditional. My grandfather was in the cavalry. My father was in the cavalry. But I think we've talked enough for one night, don't you? Good night, Sergeant. Good night, sir. Go to sleep, Joe. I'll stand guard tonight. Go on. Thank you. Close on. We're clearing out. All right.
That's walking. I'd say this is no minor uprising, it seems to me. The Ozarks are on the warpath. Captain, take my advice and leave this territory just as fast as you can. The Indians won't fight at night, so move out right now. That's ridiculous. We aren't moving anywhere on account of one savage. And about their never attacking at nighttime, he tried to. He didn't come to fight, he came to steal the horses. Captain, if you leave now, you'll Maybe be Maybe so. To... But my orders prohibit night travel in this area, and I'm going to follow them. We'll be moving out at daybreak, Lieutenant. I'm real sorry you have to stay back here and eat the dust kicked up by the rest of us. <laughs> it could be worse. You've got a lot of courage, young lady. I'd say you know how to look after yourself pretty well. Oh, I don't know about that. Hey, you should do that more often. Do what more often? Smile. It does you good. <laughs> it's too much trouble. You know, sometimes I wish I really was brave. You're doing all right. This territory is good for nothing but dust. No possible way for raising cattle. Now, where I come from, we have the Jew on it. What kind of a soldier are you? Pretty unusual, I'd say. Yeah, you'll never know how right you are. Hey, Bob, uh, Lieutenant, uh, with your permission, I have a message for you from the captain. What is it? May I speak to you a moment alone? Sure. Let's leave. What are you waiting for? Don't worry. We'll leave when I'm good and ready. And but I'm not going to Fort Alamo to get shot. They hang you for murder, buddy. Ah. Ah. Oh! Let's fix that here. All right, let me have a look at it. I'll get some coffee made. Oh, I'd love some coffee. You order the order. Uh, Lieutenant. Yeah, I'll do that huh? right away. Uh, you know, Lieutenant, I was up all night thinking about our conversation yesterday evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, something's bothering me. Uh, I could be wrong, Lieutenant, but uh, you did say an apple, is it? Yeah, sure. Uh, in that case, you're the first cavalry officer who ever came from Annapolis. You see, Annapolis is a naval academy. Hmm. You might fool that idiot of a captain, but you can't fool me. Stop it. With all these soldiers around, that'd be plain foolish. What I lack in hide, I have here. And don't think I owe you anything because you saved my life. I've saved too many myself. Hmm. You're pretty strange. And I sure would like to know more about you. For example, who are you? Or what on earth are you doing in that uniform? What have you and the boy got to hide? In all that confusion last night, why didn't you just steal yourself a horse? And ride off. But why should I? Only people with something to hide run away. Don't try and block. It won't work. You already gave yourself away because if you really had nothing to hide, you'd never tried to draw just now. And if you want to...
I'm not mistaken, you come from Fort Appleby, right? You were on patrol. Answer me when I ask a question. Were you on patrol? Yeah, we were on patrol. Say, sir, when you speak to me. Are you so scared you forgot army regulations? No, sir. A patrol passing by from Fort Appleby. Looks like this man's the only survivor. What's your name, soldier? Carson. Private Carson. And remember the sir. Private Carson, sir. Hey, what's that over there? Lieutenant! Lieutenant! Look at this, sir. What is this, the porch payroll? Bring it here, soldier. Yes, sir. What's this money for? And where did it come from, anyway? It's not my business. Ask that sergeant. Where's the other... Kincaid! Private Kincaid, I've warned you to wear your hat properly. Next time, I'll put you on a charge. Now, what's this about other... Other what? Other? Other? Sir, are you sure? You did say other. Did I say it? I wouldn't know. Just answer the captain's question, King Sergeant Warwick. Why the hell are you giving orders in the presence of two officers? If I need your help, Sergeant, I'll ask for it. 131, 132, 133, 134. Hmm, I wouldn't say no to all that. It's a pretty big stake. Was the other bag full as well? I don't know. The Indians must have taken it. If it was, they've thrown it away by now. The only money they know about is Lieutenant. Gold silver. According to Army regulations, it's the second in command who's required to look after company funds. Mm. Now then, mm. say anything, Sergeant? Cleared my throat, sir. Put your name in this book, and the money's your responsibility. Use your back, Sergeant. Sir. advise passing this way. What is it? That's a sacred cemetery of the Ozarks. We'd better take another way. I'll decide which way we're gonna go. Do you know this area, Captain? I know the regulation. You two, get those bones off the road. be waiting for us. They're up there right now, watching every move we're making. Lieutenant, we're not about to modify my plans for those idiotic, superstitious savages. Why are you waiting? Get those bones out of there.
They even burned their eyes out. That's a favorite torture of the Ozarks. Sergeant, have these men buried. And make sure the women don't find out. Yes. Get the horses fed and watered. Look lively there. Where are you all going? Well, I think everything's all right now. You needn't be frightened. I'd stay in the coach tonight if I were you. Anything can happen. I do not intend to sit in a coach all night. Besides, I'm not you. I'm sorry, I'm sleeping as usual, Lieutenant, in my bed. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you have to obey orders like the rest of us. I do not take orders, Lieutenant. Don't touch me. How dare you? Lieutenant, Mrs. Collins will sleep where she wants. Okay, but if she wakes up in the morning with some arrow sticking in her, don't blame me. Lieutenant, how's it feel to have half a bank hanging around your waist? Well, how would you like it? Uh, it'd be no good to me. In fact, if I happened to run across the bag the Indians took, I'd give it to you in the name of the United States government. Who are you? What difference does it make? Let's say I want to know what's what. Most of all, I'd like to know why you didn't run away when you had the chance. You saw the men over there on the crosses. Can you imagine what Indians like those would do to women and children? Are you trying to tell me that you have a troubled conscience? That's too bad. While we're being so friendly, why don't you tell me why you didn't tell the captain about me? Listen to me, and I'll give it to you straight. Go on. You're the only one among us who knows these parts and the ways of the Ozarks. So? So you're the only one who can take us to Fort Alamo. Yeah, but I don't aim to be shot when we get there. Hang, Jimmy. Hang. Only real soldiers get shot. So I've been told. to tell you something. When we get to the end of this long trip, if I can think of the good times I'll have, I can forget a lot of things. I'll remember that. But only at the end of the trip, remember that too. I'll keep it in mind. You'd better not forget it. We still have a long way to go, friend. Part of that money is mine. If you're looking for trouble, take your hands off. Put that gun away. Don't forget, we're soldiers. Carson, what's going on? Put that gun away. But this idiot tried to murder me with his fancy knife You throwing. say sir when you speak to an officer. Yes, sir. I tell you that this man... This is Private Kincaid, and you need a little discipline. You're on guard duty tonight. What? Are you objecting? <clears throat> The rest of you get back to your posts. Arguing at this time of time. Thanks.
But you know, you're a pretty lenient officer. Now, that Captain Hull, presumably, would have fined him a month's pay. And as for you, just put that damn knife away before I take it away from you. If I were you, I'd keep away from here. My company could make things hard for you. You know Captain Hull... I can choose my friends without asking him. Oh. Ah. Hey, you should be asleep. I'm on guard, sir. Sir? You only say that to officers. You get some sleep. I'll stay on guard. And give me that rifle. posted a man here. I sent him away. He wasn't needed. I can watch the horses by myself. Guard duty was a good way to keep an eye on Carson. Yeah, I know what you mean. I forgot I was dealing with such a clever man. Exactly. I don't like untrustworthy men under my feet. And nobody's messing with the horses tonight. Help! man in irons for molesting that girl over there. Two men over here. You out of trouble? What's going on here? The girl prisoner was being molested, sir. This man was responsible. Every day the men are causing more and more trouble. What kind of soldiers do we have in this outfit? I should have him shot. Don't 
Don't worry, we'll get there all right. I hope so. I give you my word, Mrs. Collins. Give me a hand here. Break the harnesses. Thank you. You come over here. Reach for that. Thank you, Captain. Sergeant, sir, what's this confusion? The trail's clear. We can move out. Not before you explain what this confusion is. I sorted out the supplies, so there's a little for each wagon. You've mixed everything? Munitions with food and uniforms? Right. So if we lose one wagon... We'll... It's madness, Lieutenant. Nobody's losing a wagon. This is the military operation, I might remind you. Captain, I... Keep quiet, Lieutenant. Put back the supplies. Reload as before. I want to pay, huh? Just as I feared, they're waiting for us at the end of the valley. Our only hope is to get to the island and the river. Let's hope they don't try getting over here tonight, Bud, because if they do, we don't stand a chance. Maybe they don't want to come near us because we violated their cemetery. If that's true, we might still get away. Uh-huh. That's what I think, Slim. Lieutenant. Yes, ma'am. Is there... Is there any chance of winning? Do we have any hope? We've no hope at all. Bud. 
over here. I want a bargain. You've got to try and believe me, but You and me together, but What are we doing with the army anyhow? I'm not aiming to die for nobody. But you've got the money. Don't forget that it was the Union soldiers who burnt down your property. That money's ours, but we even risked our own lives for it. And you organized the robbery. Let's get out. Sergeant. Sergeant. Lieutenant, put this man back in irons. All right. Let's go. How come you're always within earshot? <laughs> Janet, you heard everything. I would have preferred telling you myself, but maybe it's better this way. I'm glad I know. It's a bond between us. They're getting ready for the attack tomorrow morning. Someone's got to get word to Fort Alamo before the Indians attack the camp. Sir, I think it's our only hope, but Lieutenant Smith... Sergeant, nobody's going anywhere. Remember that. And you're to warn the guards to shoot on sight. Anyone seen trying to leave the island for any reason. That's an order. I just thought I'd tell you I'm going to try and get to Fort Alamo. And I beg you to have faith in me. I do, bud. I'll come back, Janet. I'm going ahead. Shh. If they hear you, they'll shoot you on sight.
Goodbye, Slim. Look after Janet. And give the sergeant a hand. A second in command. You should keep the money. Sergeant, let's hope he still escaped anyway.
Don't waste time over me. Anyway, for me, it's over. But get Carson. Get him for me. You'd better get me with your first shot. Otherwise, Carson, I'll rip you to pieces. few things left undone. You know, I've got to go back and turn over the money. There have been so many men killed. No one will ever know you're gone. Goodbye, bud. I think you did the right thing. But I'm sorry that you didn't get the money that you wanted to rebuild your farm. We'll rebuild it anyhow, Janet. And we'll get the money. Nice, clean money. 